Hello, and welcome to the DIY hosting of a WordPress website video course. In this video, we're going to increase the performance of our Raspberry Pi before we let it out into the open by increasing its CPU clock rate through an overclocking process. So increasing your Pi's performance can be risky. It is safe to do so up to a certain point. Your Raspberry Pi, as it comes when you buy it, is a credit card sized a uh, minified computer. It doesn't have significant heat sink capability. It doesn't come with a fan. Nearly all computers have these two things in order to dissipate heat away from their CPU. So with a Raspberry Pi, we have to be very careful when we think about overclocking it. For moderate overclocking, you need something called passive cooling, which means you need a special case for your Raspberry Pi which has a thermal paste that will stick to the top of your CPU and dissipate heat using the case itself as a heatsink. If you're going to do a lot of overclocking and you're really going to push the Pi to its limit, then you require active cooling, which is where you have a fan connected to a large heatsink and that then blows the heat away from the CPU. In this video, we're going to play it quite safe. We're going to tweak the Raspberry Pi just a little bit to increase its performance but we're not going to take any risks with our Pi. So let's have a look at the two types of Raspberry Pi that I'm going to be talking about in this course. I mentioned at the start of the course that I refer to the Raspberry Pi 3 and the Raspberry Pi 4. Both of the Pis on the screen here are my Raspberry Pis. The top right one is the Raspberry Pi 3, which I'm using for this course. The bottom right is my Raspberry Pi 4. The difference between them is that my Raspberry Pi 3 has no form of cooling, no passive cooling or active cooling, whereas my Raspberry Pi 4 in the bottom right hand corner has a heat sink case. So that green case is metal and it's connected to the processor inside the case using a thermal paste and so I'm able to overclock my Pi 4 more than I overclock my Pi 3. So let's look at the difference between the two. So the Pi 3, when it comes from the manufacturer, will operate at 1.4 GHz when it's under load. We can safely overclock that to 1.5 GHz as it is without any additional cooling. Why do you, why is a, is a good question, why don't they give you a Raspberry Pi with 1.5 GHz as its clock rate? The simple answer is that the manufacturers have a warranty they have to honour and they play it safe. But it's quite okay, I've been doing it for a very long time, is to have your Raspberry Pi 3 without any additional cooling operate at 1.5 GHz and that is what we're going to do today. If you have a passive cooling system similar to what you can see in my Raspberry Pi 4 photograph in the bottom right hand corner it's safe to go up to about 1.7 GHz with a Raspberry Pi 3 and if you've got a big more expensive very much more power consuming cooling system you could get your Raspberry Pi 3 as high as 1.9 GHz not to say that I endorse that you are risking your, the life and the durability of your Pi when you go that high. With the Pi 4, it comes out of the box with a clock speed of 1.5 GHz. It's safe to take it up to 1.6 without any extra cooling. Uh, I, the my Pi down here, runs at 1.8 GHz quite comfortably in its heat sink case. And people regularly go up to 2 GHz with an active cooling system. So that's kind of the picture for these two systems. As I've mentioned in the, I think it was the first video, however, I like the idea that the Raspberry Pi is a power efficient web server. And I think we have to balance that uh, with the overclocking. So what I'm going to do as I'm using my Raspberry Pi 3, I'm going to only overclock it to 1.5 gigahertz so I don't end up consuming too much more power. And it's the same really with my Raspberry Pi 4. I don't want an active cooling system because it uses more power. So I chose a passive cooling system and overclocked it to 1.8 gigahertz. So we're going to go now to my desktop and we're going to start the process of overclocking the Pi and checking it's overclocked properly. Okay, so to overclock the Raspberry Pi, we obviously need to log in. So I've got my PowerShell here and I'm going to SSH Pi into the Raspberry Pi. If you've been following along with the course, you'll know why that works. That's because I've got an alias uh, with the name Pi, and we've got public private key authentication set up. Now that we're in the Pi, we can overclock it, but we need to show that the overclocking is working. So it's a bit more complicated. The first thing we're going to set up is a way of showing that the overclocking is working. Uh, so first, let's sudo apt-get install. 
and we're going to install a application called stress which will allow us to stress the CPUs which will show us what the clock rate is running at. Okay. With that done, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to check that the Raspberry Pi isn't being throttled. Because if the Raspberry Pi is being throttled, the results we're going to get from the stress test aren't really going to make a lot of sense. So let's do vcgencmd space get throttled. And by doing that, we get a result, which is throttled equals 0x0. That's what we're looking for. If you have a number after the last, after the x, so instead of 0, you have something else, that means that the Raspberry Pi's OS is throttling back your CPU. Under normal circumstances, when you're providing enough power to the CPU and the CPU isn't too hot, you'll be getting 0x0. It's important we check this first before we go any further. Now, how do we monitor the CPU? Well, we can actually use a similar utility. So if you start type in watch minus n 0 0.5, so that's the watch command just to refresh the screen every half a second, followed by the same command we had above, vc gen cmd space, but now we're going to use measure clock arm. So if we press enter on that, we get into a watch state where we're going to be watching the CPU cycles every half a second. And what you can see here is our CPU is fluctuating between 0 0.6 and 1.4 gigahertz. The reason is the Raspberry Pi will idle at 600 megahertz and will only spool up to its full speed when it actually needs to do so. So you can see it's going between 600 and 1.4. What we want to see once we've overclocked the Pi is it going from 600 to 1.5. That's our objective. Okay. Now, in order that we can run the stress command at the same time as the watch command, the easiest thing to do is for us to open another PowerShell. So if we bring another shell over, oh, here we go. Windows is trying to get my window to hook onto the right of my screen there and I SSH into the Pi using my alias. So now what we can do is we can, we can run the watch minus n 0.5 VC gen CMD measure clock arm command in one window. And in this one, we can run the uh, stress command, stress minus minus CPU one. So you, we've put two things together here. We're now stressing the CPU, and now we can see on the right-hand side the clock speed has got up to 1.4 gigahertz and is sitting there. Great. So now we have the tools we need to prove that the overclocking is working, because when we do this exact scenario next time, we'll be seeing 1.5, hopefully, or 15 million, whatever that number is. So we're going to stop both of these. So now let's actually do the overclocking setup. So we need to edit a configuration file um, under the boot directory. So type in sudo nano, where nano is our text editor of choice here, boot into the boot directory, and then the file is called config.txt. And what we're going to do is we're going to ignore the uncommented, sorry, the commented out uh, lines. We're going to go right to the bottom instead, and we're going to add a couple. We're going to add two, arm underscore frequency equals 1500. Now this is the clock speed and this is what you will change. If you've got a passive cooling system, and for example, you've got a Raspberry Pi 4 like I have, I have this set to 1800, but be very careful about changing this number beyond something sensible. If you don't have a passive cooling solution um, and you're running a Raspberry Pi 3 like I am, don't go above 1500, I, I recommend not doing so. And I will explain why in a few moments. The next command is over voltage equals two. This gives our CPU more voltage and it will need it. So with those two things done, we have the voltage going to the CPU, the greater voltage, and we have the on frequency set to 1500. We can now save and we can exit. And now we need to restart our Pi to make the change happen. So sudo shut down minus R now will reset our Raspberry Pi. So I'll see you on the other side. Okay, I've given my Raspberry Pi about 30 seconds to 
reset. So that should be long enough. I'm just going to clear my screens using the clear command. Now I'm going to SSH back in. So we've changed the configuration file just before we reset the Pi, which should have meant that the maximum CPU clock speed will be set at 1500. We can probably observe this without having to stress the CPUs if we just perform our watch command. So if I use the up key on my keyboard and keep going up, I will find my watch command for the measure clock functionality. So I press enter and there we go. And we can already see it working. We can see it's iterating between 600 megahertz and 1.5 gigahertz. But we can doubly check this by running stress minus minus CPU one. And there we go. So if there was a task on our Raspberry Pi that required one CPU running flat out, you can now see that the Raspberry Pi will comfortably run at 1.5 gigahertz instead of 1.4. Now, the important thing to talk about now before we finish is throttling. And if I now increase the CPU, say to four, watch what happens. OK. Oh, look. Basically, the Raspberry Pi has taken control um, and you can see in the top right hand corner, it's reduced the speed of the CPU down to 1.2 gigahertz for each core. This is to prevent the CPU getting too hot. And I personally don't want to change that. I'm quite happy with that. So if there's a process which is absolutely saturating our CPU, it brings each core down to 1.2 gigahertz to protect the CPU. And I'm quite happy with that. But it's an interesting um, example of how overclocking is basically OK, up to the point where your temperature exceeds a threshold. So if I go back to one CPU, you can see it's, it's still not sure because the temperature is quite high. If I were now to let my CPU cool down and try again, it would allow me to use 1.5 regularly. In fact, you can see it's spiking up to 1.5 again um, in the background. So why do we bother overclocking if we can't run our CPU flat out at 1.5? Well, there's two things. Firstly, if you had a passive calling system or an active calling system, uh, you would be able to run your CPU at high cycles continuously. Um, if you haven't, like I haven't on my Pi 3, you can still have spikes of faster performance. And if you're running a web server, which this course is all about, and an email server, that's what you care about. You care about those moments when you need to move data around and deliver something to the client side. And so a faster clock speed is very important. A persistent fast clock speed, that would be nice, but it's not the only important factor here. OK, so that's that. We've overclocked our Raspberry Pi. We're now achieving a faster performance. I hope you found the video useful. I'd very much appreciate it if you could like the video and if you could subscribe to my course. Uh, it makes it easier for me to spend my evenings recording them. So thank you very much and I will see you in the next video.